Uh, good morning. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yong Chu Yang. Uh, I'm the head of carrier relations from uh, Verizon Digital Media Services. Uh, we focus on content and the uh, content delivery through uh, the EdgeCast uh, CDN uh, platform at this time. Uh, VDMS about EdgeCast about a year and a half ago, and the uh, the uh, EdgeCast is the uh, the main. Uh, uh, revenue generator for the VDMS at this time. Uh, but uh, first, I'd like to uh, talk about a little bit of uh, the additional way of doing our peering. Uh, uh, HKS itself has about uh, 38 uh, peering locations, uh, 38 exchanges that uh, we are connected to and with the 4,000 plus uh, peering sessions around the world. But uh, what we've been doing along with the Verizon network itself uh, with 701 is that we recognize the uh, amount of traffic that we have outbound and versus a lot of inbound traffic for the 701. We are able to put that into our same contract with uh, some of our large carriers around the world. When the condition is right, uh, we are able to uh, utilize the uh, EdgeCast outbound traffic uh, uh, along with the uh, peering sessions. So, uh, uh, so this new format of uh, peering is called a BIA. We call it a bilateral interconnect agreement. Uh, so Verizon traditionally have and still uh, had and still have the uh, settlement free peering with the large carriers. Uh, that's a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio and sometimes it's a one, point, one to 1.6 and one to 1.8 uh, type of uh, peering arrangement. But as you can see, the one to one relationship is very difficult uh, because uh, unless you have similar in size in network and the similar uh, size in traffic, both inbound and outbound, it is very hard to maintain that one to one relationship. Even at 1.8, it's very hard to sustain that uh, perfect ratio and which means the upgrade becomes uh, very difficult for both partners. Uh, because unless you have, uh, unless you uh, both side come up with the uh, uh, same amount of traffic on the peering, that ratio becomes uh, very difficult. And again, uh, that uh, ceremony of pre peering uh, agreement itself becomes useless because uh, the customers are complaining, uh, networks uh, congestions are struggling. So with that, what the idea that we came out was uh, giving each other uh, partners at one to one, one to three, and to a one to five uh, ratio, which becomes much flexible. And uh, another problem with the settlement free peering was there was no enforcement, and it's not a commercial uh, contract that nobody was able to enforce the relationship or make the relationship better. But with the BIA, uh, after a one to three and one to five type of ratio is, uh, if one side decides to go over that ratio, it becomes a commercial agreement. Uh, we propose uh, sometimes at 30 cents per Mac and 40 cents per Mac, which is uh, very flexible and below the uh, trans rate. Uh, so, uh, what EdgeCast has outbound traffic uh, that is added to uh, uh, Verizon's inbound traffic that we are able to uh, uh, put all these agreements together. And what it does is that when you have um, a trigger point, uh, uh, put it in at 50%, so if uh, a port is reached at fifty percent. We'll do an upgrade, and uh, each side agreed to send each other's customers' traffic only. So makes a, uh, it makes the peering relationship healthy, and both networks are healthy uh, through the arrangement. And again, and it becomes a commercial agreement if one side decided to go over uh, that uh, ratio base. So uh, you know, whenever uh, because the content. Uh, is generating a lot of traffic. The current, uh, the peering arrangement, uh, you, unless you are a large uh, eyeball carrier or uh, somebody who has a large contents like we do, uh, unless you are one of those two, 
uh, it become, becomes uh, more and more troublesome for anybody to use a peering uh, as uh, efficiently as before uh, because the, the cost of the transit uh, versus the cost of the peering, the gap is shrinking. And with that, uh, we utilize both PIA settlement free and as well as the uh, uh, you know, public peering in our network to create a global delivery networks that uh, that we are uh, touching like 8% of the total internet traffic you know, around the world. And uh, our team is doing uh, all the uh, capacity managements and all the peering and, uh, and also what's called MCDN. Uh, that's uh, what our team is in charge of and own, uh, own uh, w w you know, working with all the carriers around the world. And not just the tier one carriers, but we also work with uh, many regional carriers uh, for each country because we realize uh, for somebody who has contents, we need to work with uh, the, uh, the regional carriers and the intermediary networks as well as the trans carriers to make our delivery uh, and our contents, uh, you know, with the, uh, we try to uh, cut the milliseconds and the shave, uh, you know, permit pricing as much as possible. So as you can see, um, you know, with PIA, uh, it becomes very important uh, along, among with the uh, large carriers, uh, but it's, you know, it's not for everybody, but we, uh, and it's, it's not a solution that, uh, that fits all the, uh, all the conditions correctly, but when the condition is right, we are able to use this PIA uh, along in our appearing uh, to, uh, uh, you know, make our uh, networks uh, bigger and healthier uh, through the, uh, uh, through uh, uh, future deliveries. And I'd like to introduce Alejandro. Uh, he's uh, in charge of all the southern, uh, uh, South America deliveries, and he's my go-to guy for the, uh, for the region. Good morning, let me switch to Spanish. This is the general scheme of the plans that we have for what remains of 2015. It's about 16 new hops for South America. At present, the only POP that is operational is in Sao Paulo. It is among the it's in uh, with uh, one of the companies of uh, uh, Verizon and that uh, is uh, called uh, Terramark. And we have open peering there. And exchanging traffic through the traffic is. We have a second that we plan to connect to in Rio de Janeiro. For Argentina, we'll have at least uh, two or three more POPs in Chile. There'll be a, from two to three additional POPs. Here in Lima, we'll have another in uh, the cable head of Urim. In Ecuador, we'll have a POP in the local uh, exchange point. Uh, and in Colombia, we'll have two POPs, one in a carrier in Bogota and another one in a carrier in Medellin. The idea is to make South America grow. If you look at the map, uh, that's the only POP, and the response times don't meet uh, the needs uh, of our streaming customers. So our aim is that by the end of the year, we'll have a very good coverage. And if you look at the map uh, very well, another point that we are losing is Africa. We are yielding to France in the case of Africa. But the plan is to start, especially in the north, and to improve our deployment. So this was uh, the information of uh, 
the infography. This is in the website. We analyzed the different object, the different devices. You can download this from the LACNIC website, and you'll see the, the what the new streaming con, uh, customer searches and what Verizon has to offer. So there at the end you have my email. If you want to write to me for it, it's Alejandro dot Escobar Franco at Verizon dot com or my other email. Please route the autonomous system and we'll conduct the measurements and will classify your request for an SCM agreement, including a potential peering, and will consider you as potential candidates for, for peering deployment in future countries. Any questions? duda no sé si entendí bien pero tienen una política abierta de ruteo de sí. peering o no sí. So do you have any open policy for peering? Yes, absolutely open. What happens is that there are several nodes that are deployed with MCDM agreements. That means that they are for the exclusive use of that carrier. When you we generate a a POP of Verizon in an open peering that has no restrictive contracts with a carrier, we configure it so it's not open. It's open when it's CDN, but it's different when, for instance, it's to get to Verizon customers. No, it's not concerning Verizon's customers, but rather the concerning the volume of traffic, for instance. If an incumbent in an X country writes that incumbent is measured the amount of traffic, that is, it's the same as in Google and the rest. Well, in Google, it's open. We don't request well, but for a private deployment and a cache, you request a minimum. Yes, it's exactly the same here. We also have a minimum t uh, uh, cap of traffic. If that is uh, complied with, then we dispatch. But not of catchy. Well, if I'm a small uh, IPS and I go to Verizon and I, I say I want to do peering with you, do we? Uh, can I do it? Well, Verizon Digital. Well, we have one, two, three, four autonomous systems, 701. But this doesn't apply to 701. Well, that's my question. No, I'm speaking of 151.33. That is Hedgecast. There are different things. Here I'm saying Hedgecast or Verizon Digital has an open peering policy. 701 is a tier one, and if they did open peering, then all the business would be would disappear. Yes, so those are two different businesses of Verizon with, under different restrictions. So depending on a Verizon's needs, they provide services. So whether they need peering or not. No, I just want to understand. It's a little bit complex for me to understand that one policy is open and the other one is closed in different in the same company. There are different groups. One is Verizon as such, the autonomous system 701 and 703 in Europe and in Asia. Yes. Yes, and another different thing, and those 701, 702, and 703 are subject to what Young Chul said. We evaluate the exchange ratio, and based on that, we establish an agreement that may or may not be commercial. Our autonomous system, 151.33, has a peering policy that is absolutely open. If I have a note, yes, and there, the radio, the, the uh, outbound to radio and it's well it's a less, little uh, strange but I understand them I wanted to, to let to make them clear but it depends on who you are talking if it's an ISP or if it's a contents generator it's different 
And on the other hand, we also have to give traffic to other uh, carriers one and there and that ISP in Google we have Google Fiber and Google Fiber has an open peering policy so we do peering with anybody requesting peering and we are an ISP that has eyes just as a Verizon in the United States and uh, uh, I see that there are inconsistencies and I wanted to see it clearly to check whether I understood and I think I did these are not lack of consistencies, but different companies. But we take advantage of the holding, but we are the same as in our edge cast. Alejandro Hernandez from Cavasia, Argentina. I have two questions. One is I heard about carriers, and I see that you have the bilateral agreement in the understanding that the traffic exchange points could be a potential point through which you can get connected. I didn't listen. You speak about exchange points, but you spoke about peering with carriers and bilaterals. And we are, many of us are traffic exchange points with multilateral agreements. So I would like to know if that is an issue or if it is not an issue and what are the plans for disembarking and connecting to the IXPs with multilateral agreements. No, that is not an issue. In Brazil, in fact, we are using the PDT Metro from Sao Paulo and now we are increasing the number of interfaces given the demand there is in Latin America. And Sao Paulo, do you have a multilateral one? Yes, in Sao Paulo we have the two things. We have multilateral and we also establish private peerings on request. Plans for other IXPs in South America, we have been working on this. We are fully open to sending POPs that are hosted in the IXPs. So ultimately, this will depend on the numbers of the autonomous systems in order to have sufficient traffic and so that this can be validated in the event of business. But all IXPs with multilateral open policies to the ESNs are being deployed. My second question, and maybe for some of us at the IXPs, we try to contact content distribution networks in order to bring them closer to us. Now, in the case of Edgecast, I understand that specifically delivering a DSN federation system, I participated at the World Summit last year. I understand that some of the European CDNs, or at least one I know, you deliver service in Latin America. I would like to know if that is open information, just for the purpose not looking for CDNs that you are already handling content for. Well, there's certain information that we can share with. It all depends on the confidentiality agreement with the final customer. But I can send you all the information you might need. Thank you. Thank you very much, then. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Yanchu.